in the house in shock. I don't, I, I don't Wait, know. Why did they cancel your stuff? You never know. I mean, if you're Come watching on, this, no. coach, just <laughs> what they say with the, with the smoke, that's fire. What you, what you do? 236 minus 74. I'm not even doing this, though. <laughs> I won once again. The <laughs> question is flawed. It's <laughs> not flawed. It is flawed. It is flawed. What's up, people? Welcome back to Change Over Podcast. My name is Justin Roberts. To my right, I have Jordi McGinley. And we are at home in Pompano Beach. Today's episode is for anybody who is interested in college tennis. Anybody who knows anybody interested in college tennis. Because we have some guys here who are trying to revolutionize the recruiting process in college tennis. They've created the, you can call it the LinkedIn or the Tinder of college tennis, maybe. <laughs> um, we have two guys who are playing, who have both played at my alma mater, University of South Florida. We have a former top 35 junior in the world, former Grand Slam finalist, yeah. Frenchman finalist, Bruno Oliveira, and all conference in the AAC and Big Ten, Ivan Yatsuk. Thanks for joining us, guys. For sure. Why you didn't shout out his uh, his junior ranking and junior career? He played juniors too. <laughs> but the more impressive is his uh, <laughs> is all conference. You can say two ATP. Yeah. Say two <laughs> <laughs> so at this game, at this episode, now we're gonna start with uh, a game. So you got your boards in front of you. I'm going to give. Have you seen this or no? Have you seen us play the game? I have not. They don't watch. I've done it just... two episodes now, and I lost every time. So, so it's gonna be five questions. You can play along at home. And if there's a tiebreaker, we will have a... So the first five questions, you have to answer on the board. And the tiebreaker will be the first one to answer out loud, gets it, and it's done. All right? So you're saying five questions in a row? I will say one question. One one. We'll see what the answers are, and we'll go. And then... All right? So let's see. Not, not cheating, Ivan. You guys went to college, right? Everybody here went to college? <laughs> Spell nauseous. It's not my first <laughs> language. It's not my first language. You are in college, right? I'm going to see if they use it in chat GPT over there at USF or not. I'm bringing on excuses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is outrageous. I, I think you're going to be wrong. Wish. Think wrong, think wrong, bro. That's right. <laughs> Jody, give me some. No, no, no. Oh, they're done. Yeah, that, they're done. There's no T. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bruno, there's say, no say how you spell it, Nashant? No, like this. Spell it. N A U. <laughs> T I O U S. Horrible. 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 Senior, Horrible. by the way. Ivan. Yeah. I think I got it. N A U S E O U S. Northwestern, right there. For Let's me. Oh. No, no, no. Hey, hey. What do you say? N A U. N A U S E O U S. I put N A U S E O U S. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I put S C O U S. And you did what? S C. Oh, it's South Carolina. Ivan, Northwestern up one. Did you wait? Did you? Did you get it? Then you got it. I'm not playing. Oh, you're not playing at all. He's reading. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm actually shocked by my performance so far. Question two. True or false? A tomato is a fruit. No, I know this one. Me okay. too, man. I'm sure. Right. You write it down? You write it down? I don't need to. I can say it out loud. Oh, Ivan knows. Ivan. Hmm? Tomato is a fruit? False. Wow. Northwest is crazy. It is a fruit. That's true. Yeah. What? It is a fruit. I Come on, man. It is a fruit. Fruit, fruit shall grow above That's ground, true. right? And vegetables grow. That's your boyfriend? It's <laughs> <laughs> to get better. Like... All right. You tennis won. question. Hey, put one. You put one. Yeah, yeah. One, one, one. Okay, okay. We tied up. Damn. Tennis question. Who won his first ATP title at the Cordoba Open in 2024? Who I know that one. I... Because he's my friend. For dope. Yeah. Is it him? Yeah. Oh my word. Daudery, daudery. Yeah, that, I wrote. That was, that was oh, Buenos that Aires. Was, you always that, done uh, it. Uh, I wrote Diaz a The recruited boys. 2 yeah. 1. But that was easy, bro. I grew up I grew up in Voce. So that, Thank you. Know, it's it's a messed up on the first. The answer is Luciano Daudery. So they both got that. Yeah. Yeah, and you did it. Losing once again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Making us look bad. You have a chance to redeem yourself. Women's tennis question. Watch women's tennis? I believe tennis? I got the free one wrong. You watch women's tennis? No, that's uh, the... Uh, yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> Who won the 2023 women's Wimbledon title? A lot, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to spell her name. 
Really? I'm actually far from that, man. I'll let them answer for me, and you can just say it all out. How much time do we have? To? You have 10 seconds. What? Oh, my word. I don't know if this girl wants in 22 or 23. I feel like she wants in 22, you know. Wait, wait. Five. Four. Three. I think this girl wants in 22. Two. I'm going to guess someone else. One. I guess, Bruno? I guess Badosa, but it was the... I mean, that's it's horrible. I know it's not <laughs> true. No, not Sweet Tech, not Badosa. I know it's not. I guess Eager too, because I thought... What's her name? Bon, bon Nusova? That's who it is. I thought it was... <laughs> <laughs> Marketa Bon Nusova is the answer. What? Bro, that's I thought actually, that was 2022. 2023. Are you sure? No, 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 no. no. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure it's 2022. Okay, VRA? VRA. Yeah. VRA. Wimbledon. 2023 women's. I think it was 25. Bro, you're right. Marketa Vondrasova. Next question, bro. She's shocked me at this game. <laughs> I had her. I don't know if I've ever gotten two points. And it's okay. Question five. Uh, what continent. Is this worth two points? It's worth one. What con. Okay, go on, go on, go on. What continent is the country Libya found on? Bro, I Ooh. see these college educations over here. She was, <laughs> bro. <laughs> I'm in between two, but I was like, she pick one. <laughs> I picked one. I picked one to be. I'm showing for the start. Oh my word. All right, bro. I'll, I'll bro. I was gonna say Africa, but I said Asia. I said you said it. I said Africa is correct. Yeah. Oh, we all tied. That's no, cool. Ivan. Oh. Ivan won, but. We can break the the last place tie if you want. Okay. No, 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 no. Let's break it. Let's break the last place tie. Get something. <laughs> okay, so Wait, it's oh, no? yeah. First to answer. You can't have him break his streak, Bruno. First to answer. Yeah. Ready? Yes. You mean you might need a whiteboard? What do you mean? Mathematics. I'm not. Okay. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> Why do you do this shit, bro? Every time. This is funny. Oh, <laughs> Two hundred and thirty-six minus seventy-four. I'm not even doing this though. <laughs> Don't give up. I'm not even doing this. Though. I'm not even doing this. Go for it. Is it 62? Did you say what no? You it's say? 162. How about that? Oh. Yes, Jordy Jordy wins. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's crazy. That actually helped. <laughs> All right, that's, that's the help. that's so, the game. So he wins. Hey, so he came second. second. You won. You won. Like, right. Congratulations! I gave you the silver platter thing. <laughs> Like he did all the hard parts. Yeah, I, know, I actually did. I actually did the math. Like, <laughs> this is not a good stat for you because we're about to, you know, talk about, talk college, about your product. Let's recruit and. Uh, oh yeah, no, we'll work. <laughs> I have to step up here. Okay, okay, let's get into the episode. So, um, Bruno, can you talk to us a little bit about your college, uh, your junior career? Sorry. So, um, we know that you got to top forty in juniors, but before that. Um, how was it? You grew up in Brazil, like playing, and, and I mean, at what point was tennis a serious thing for you? Yeah, I think first of all, thank you guys for having us. I didn't say on the, on the record. I think it's really important for us opening for you guys opening the door for us. It's it's great. It just means a lot. But um, juniors, juniors is crazy, man. It's like the Disneyland of tennis. You mm -hmm. know, like when you think everything should be like that. You know, you have like free accommodation, you have free food. Um, in the tournaments, like you're traveling, you're getting a lot of stuff paid and, and, and you think like, I'm really good. And, and then reality hits when you go to college, when you go pro, but things, things started like, I mean, I grew up in Brazil since I was a little kid. I was playing nationals after I was 10 and, and, um, I always had support from my family, but I was in between that and soccer all my life. And, and like, yes. It's just starting getting serious when I started playing South American tournaments and all of that. And that's actually how I actually learned how to speak Spanish. Because, you know, like, it's just, it's just about having fun, you know. And if I wanted to have friends in South America in juniors, I had to learn Spanish on my own. So traveling. Um, and then after that, after 14, I started studying online. And, and I just decided to dedicate myself. And I put a goal. It was actually quite crazy. Like, I, I said, I'm going to work hard for four years. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna win wrong years like that. The, the, you know, like grew up having the influence of Guga, um, Stavo Kirtin. He was the one of the world. He was managing me and some some of my friends for a while, and and I think 
at that point, at 14, 16, things started like changing from just I'm having fun and, and let's see where it goes, you know, to I actually I actually want to do this for a living. Like when, when a lightning struck me and I said, man, I, I want this to become my life. Like tennis can get, can open every single door in my life for me, like college education and, and networking and, and just knowledge in general. So at what point do you start thinking about college and that sort of stuff? Because I feel like it's a, it's a thing for a lot of, like, I guess different tennis cultures that go into college is giving up. You know what I mean? Like, it's the dream goes away. Maybe now it's starting to change, but how was it for you? Was that how you were advised in the past, like, to go college versus go pro? So college in Brazil, um, I don't know how it's in Central America and everything, but in Brazil and South America is really... They have a lot of prejudice on the topic. They say it's the graveyard of tennis players. Yes. Yeah. Right? So, um, but I, I'm lucky I come from... Rest in peace, dog. I came from, I come from a really, like, a really nice family and, and a, a nice environment, right? And they always, my mom especially, like, she learned how to call the tennis part when I, when I was, like, 16, the county of tennis, like 15, 15, 30, all of that. So she, she always like prioritized my education. And I, I was lucky to be mentored by Bruno Suarez, who is, was number one in doubles, uh, six grand slam champions, three mixed doubles, three normal doubles. And he was my neighbor all my life. So he, he kind of mentored me all the process. And he said, my only regret is not going to college. Like when, when you have a guy number two in the world telling you that it's just, what was his reasoning? I mean, because <laughs> uh, uh, he, enjoy, he enjoys life a little bit, but um, he, I mean, his story is kind of crazy. He broke, uh, I think his ACL stopped for two years. So he made the 200 singles by 22, 23, broke his ACL twice or something like this. Couldn't play for two years. Actually started a company on his own, then quit and came back to play tennis at 25. And then by 27, he gets seen as an alternate to run years of the semi, semis. Mm. So he just said, like, look, man, my career was, I started, like, not depending on my family and making money when I was 28, right? That's when I had my boom, you know? Like, I could have gone to college and still six years to grind, and, and I, I would have enjoyed my life really well, way, much more. And, and he, would, like, he would be on a team that won in the way, if I'm, if I'm not wrong, twice. What's, what team? He was going to Baylor. Mm. Okay. Um, so he was going to go to a great team, and, and he just, he sees all the guys that was they were with him on tour, like even Farah, all those guys, Rajiv Ram, all those guys, like they had, they went to college, they conquered a lot of stuff in the United States. And one quote he gave to me was like, man, if you, if you want to go pro, you kind of want to conquer the world, but first start conquering your country, right? Like he kind of did, like, Kind of well in South America. Let's step it up. Let's go to United States. Like where tennis is, when it's very serious. You know, it's it's no joke. So he he was the one that always gave me the blinders to to just just go. And I actually had no idea what school was good. Like I only knew Harvard, Columbia, and Stanford. And for me, like Georgia was suck. Like all oh, SEC schools. Okay. I had no idea what SEC mm -hmm. schools was. And, and I mean that's that's one of the reasons we're doing recruiting because we we have everything in one place that can that can teach kids. In Brazil and South America, you know, can give them awareness, take the prejudice, prejudice out, and just have one place that you can actually maximize your opportunities, right? Like, you, one thing is you come from a tough background and, and you have no idea about college tennis, and boom, then you see you have like 20, 30 offers, you know, to, to play and to go to nice places and to conquer the world and to travel, you know? And so that's as well one of the reasons. Like, I wanna make sure that a lot of people have the same experience as I did. And as we did, and and that's what what fuels us. And and I mean, creating recruiting, um, the platform that that we want to enable that. It's funny because I feel like I us four, I guess, had different experiences. And I guess we'll talk a little bit about my experience. Um, you know, going to college in a minute. But like, do you think that the prejudice still exists? Like right now, with in South America, meaning like. If there's a 16, 17 year old kid, they're being advised you either go pro or you don't care about tennis. Like, does that still exist? You think? I think it's, it still exists a lot because people, I think they don't want to face the reality that college is changing and and they really old school, in a sense that there's only one way, 
you know they don't believe people can achieve the same results by going different routes you know the um, especially in, in brazil uh, i think that's a coach we have from soccer as well like if you're not first you suck mm -hmm. right even even in, in paris when i did finals uh, like a, a lot of people like you can see in social media a lot of love but a lot of hate like i was so close but didn't get it right and and so i think that translates to college a little bit right they, they think if you didn't go pro straight you're a failure or you're far from achieving um, your potential or you're give, giving up on your dream so um that their mentality kind of like just just box the good players from coming to college you know you, you see the lta the british players the spanish players they're all coming they're having great results and, and you know like i had the pleasure to play with toby samuel um, with Danny Rodriguez, you see all these European players coming here, achieving, conquering the United States, and then going. Were you fully sold on college, especially after finaling the, the Junior Grand Slam? Did, did that experience ever make you feel like, hey, maybe I should just try to go and attack the Pro Tour right away? I mean, it always raised questions, right? Like, because as I said, I think juniors is kind of the Disneyland of, mm -hmm. of, of tennis. Like, you, is the time you, like, you're sharing the the locker room with the pros and all of that, you're going to tournaments, you're being sparring, you're getting wild cards, and 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 then you, you think you're way better than you are, you know, and you think the, the path is way shorter than it is, right? So, I mean, when I did the finals, I, Bruno, Bruno Suarez made sure I kept my mind on the track. Okay. And, and my college process was crazy. COVID and happening in the middle, it was just... A lot of stuff going on. Why don't you tell tell us a little bit about that? Because I one of the questions that I had for you was that how much of an impact did the French Open final have in your recruiting process? But by that point, you already decided to that you were going. You already knew you were going to school. So why don't you let the let the audience know? I guess the story like that what what we heard like twenty minutes ago. Yeah, no, that, that was actually pretty crazy. I was telling them uh, right before we started. So I was supposed to like. My class, the class of 24, so we supp I was supposed to go in fall of 2020, and like COVID was hitting hard and, and everything was happening like so quick. We had no information, lockdowns and all of that, and I couldn't get my visa, right? And we we're playing day by day. Like, the embassy was always closed in Brazil, always closed, 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 closed. Got to August. I was already committed to South Carolina. I was ready to go. I was pumped. Um, I knew I, I was missing French Open on, on October to go to college. Right, and then and then the borders were closed. I couldn't go. I decided uh, with Josh Coffey, the coach there, that I mean, let's do it online. I couldn't. I couldn't go. Let's do it online. Let's wait. Let's come for the spring. And um, I waited the spring. <laughs> I was gonna go on February fourth or fifth. And then the borders. Did you get to school in February? Um, that was kind of the goal. Okay. And then. Yeah, we were already late, like we're already very late yeah. for a tennis season, right? And then, and then the borders are still closing, Jen. And it's all that craziness. Um, me and my dad, um, we f we fly to Chile to quarantine in Chile for 14 days, get a visa. The visa was supposed to be in my hands after 14 days, right? You leave the passport, 14 days, they give it back to you, stamped, good to go, you go. Um, the embassy retained for 19, 20 days, so I lost two two flight tickets. Because obviously they're saying we're giving to you. Um, and, and the best part is, before going to Chile, I had my flight booked to Chile and I tested positive for COVID. That's so, the best part? That's, <laughs> that's the best part of the story. That's the, the most shocking part of the whole process. So I had the to The language go. barrier is working right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what he meant to say was just the worst part of the story. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, I, I did struggle to spell nauseous. <laughs> Um, but <laughs> me too. Sorry, mom. <laughs> but, but yeah, then, then, I mean, we like, I, it all delayed much more and I had a deadline. Cause if you're not in school by February 12th, you can't, you're not eligible or something like okay. this. So you have to actually come back or you lose a year or like any ad that, that rules that I had to have a face to face class, I'll be dropped. So I actually, the guys are playing Georgia tech. I couldn't even fly to Columbia. I had to fly to Georgia tech to be integrated with the team on February 12th, like at like 3 p.m. Uh, and also they were playing at Georgia Tech and you flew straight there. Yeah, straight there. Okay. Just just to watch them play. I couldn't hit or anything for two weeks because the COVID protocol. So my process was was all over the place. It was nuts. Wow. That is crazy. Do you so I looked a little bit at the results before. So in your recruiting process, 
um, in your juniors before I guess that slam, you can just see overall that your doubles results were very good. So was that part of why you would have gotten recruited to to a top school? You think? I mean, yeah, I think. Like, was that in the conversations with the coaches and that sort of stuff, or not really? Yeah, no, he was. He was like, I always had one vision. Like, I always, I actually only had one official visit. Um, it's also not a bad story of my recruiting process. I had two official visits, South Carolina and Columbia, and they were scheduling. And Columbia was very excited with me, in New York, um, and they got the the tickets and everything for you, right? Like, they just fly you in. I had no idea what was happening because that. For a Brazilian, it's nuts, right? Oh, they sending me a ticket. You just go, and then, <laughs> and then Colombia. The day before I leave, they cancel my flight ticket to go to Colombia, and and like did not say a word. They kind of like ghosted me and blocked me on social media. What'd you do? Wait. I mean, I was in shock. I, I, I had Wait, no why did they cancel your stuff? Never know. I mean, if you're Come watching on, this, no. coach, just like, oh, <laughs> when they say where there's where the smoke, there's fire. What you, yeah, what you do? Let me know. Let me know what's up. If you, if you want, yeah, another, another, another crazy story right now, man. <laughs> so, like Josh Goffey finds a, a ticket like last minute. I had to do some Paulo, Toronto, Toronto, uh, Charlotte, and then drive to Columbia. It was chaotic, right? And and then like I always knew I wanted to go to him. For me, he's, he's one of the best coaches out there. He's been done amazing stuff for the South Carolina program. Had like three number ones. Um, kind of back to back years, so that's that's amazing. And talking to him, like he like the mo he was pretty emotional because he was like he was not sure if he wanted to get me or no. But I felt so much trust in him that I that I actually told him, man, like I want like I have a vision in my head and a dream. Like my dream is to be top 100, and I have a vision uh, that I can be top 10 in, in doubles. Right? And I can be I, my dream is to be top 100 in singles. And I I told him straight away in, in dinner like he. I, I trust you. Like I'm a very like um I don't like sensitive in a way. Like I feel the energy around me, and I say, man, like there is no place I want to be except here. Uh, I think you can guide me to my dream. Mm -hmm. And 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 I mean, I told him like I want to I want to be a, 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 a my my vision is to be a professional doubles player, and my dream is to play singles. But I see myself achieving and lifting the hardware. Uh, it's hardware. Yeah, 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 that's good. That's, that's right. good English. That's good. Nice. Nice. <laughs> but uh, on doubles, and and he, he was very shocked by having a seventeen year old just tell him like straight away a guy that he never kind of talked like yeah. face to face before. Just in the first dinner, it's around my family. Uh, I just said, man, like please take me. You know, like I don't know if you want me or not, but like I I, I want you. Like and I'm gonna work my ass off and and just so. That was big. I kind of maximized my points. He was kind of, he sucked, he's, I don't know if I can say it, but he sucked balls in, in journeys because I, my results were champion of G1, champion of G1, champion of G1, champion of G1, finals of GA, Grand Slam finalists. And and my results in singles were like quarters of G1, like in the quarters of G2, like winner of G3. So they didn't follow my doubles results. So like I'll go to tournaments and like, I, I wouldn't go up. Like, I kind of maximized because, of course, making semis on these big tournaments is tough. And I didn't have quite the level yet on singles. That's the reason I chose college tennis um, to develop that. But, you know, like, I kind of I kind of had a gap. Like, if it wasn't for COVID, it would be very hard for me to go up in the rankings. Like, to be honest, like, and, and, I, and I'm honest to myself. Like, I, that's why I came to college. I had to get better in singles. Mm -hmm. But you just suck. Like, because I, I loved playing doubles and I knew that even making finals and winning the tournament, I wouldn't get anything, like, in this kind of reward. Mm -hmm. So, and I mean, a lot of coaches, college coaches saw that. Like, they saw my doubles results and, and they kind of, like, they, they, they like a lot of doubles in the United States. So, they, they saw it as a motivation. I think that's a good thing. That's a good thing for people to know that also there's value in, in doubles as a junior growing up. Like, you can, like what you said, get to a good school solely off of how good you are at doubles you know like doubles is a big point so that, so it's what college coaches think about when recruiting people you know yeah so um Ivan why don't you tell us a little bit like we know like from little research I did I saw that you um been there quiet for 45 minutes so you had you played juniors um from my understanding not too much and then you had a good run at Eddie Herr uh 2017 I believe making the quarters beating a couple of top 100 guys so um, how was it for you? Were you already committed to a school at that point, or 
if not, like how much did that one result impact your recruitment? I think he actually, I was on his visit to USF. We went to eat at yes, some cafeteria. That, yeah. yeah. Poor you, oh, dude. Poor <laughs> you, dude. <laughs> with Jimmy, with Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except that's the first time he's ever seen the campus as well. Yeah. So, well, <laughs> yeah. so tell the story, Lou. Uh, yeah, so um, I was already committed to USF before the Eddie Her. And again, I the only tournaments I really played, I was like, I stayed in Florida. Didn't travel much outside of Florida. Um, only played like USC level fives, level fours, and futures, um, the ones that were around. I feel like Eddie Her was close to me. It's like five minutes from my house. Um, I had some ITF points from from playing um, ITFs in Belarus because I'm from Belarus. So I used to go every summer. I did like well in some grade fives, grade fours, like final uh, one or grade five, final to grade four. And so I was like an alternate number 20 or number 30. Um, and I ended up getting into qualies, won three matches in qualies, won three matches in main, ended up making quarters, lost in three sets to a pretty good player. And like before that, I only spoke to Ash, mm -hmm. like one coach. I didn't know anything about college tennis. Ended up committing to USF like probably a month before Eddie Her. Um, I didn't even do an official visit. I just came down for that yeah. day. Um, played Alberto in a match. Uh -huh. And then after I did Eddie Her, I started receiving like a bunch of DMs from coaches on Instagram. Like, hey, like we haven't seen you around before. Like, why? Like, are Who you are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's when I really started receiving the interest. I got some interest from like some pretty good school, like top five school. Drop some names, man. You made some um, bottles. Yeah. Wait, anyway, Wake, Wake Forest, Massachusetts, uh -huh. Illinois, like some pretty good schools. Okay. Um, and to be honest, even at that point, I already had committed to USF, and I still didn't know anything about college. I got you, yeah. Like, what was the format of college tennis? Like, what team is good? What division one is? What a conference it is? is? So, like, um, I don't know. Some coaches DM me. I kind of didn't even answer. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, just still ended up going to USF. But all the interest came after that. Um, but so you never once took phone calls from any other school or like went like did it ever shake your thoughts about going to USF the other interests or not really no 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 <laughs> really <laughs> did you come man loves USF didn't I Google anybody's school and look at the facilities and be like yo no, this looks like <laughs> no, 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 no practice whatsoever <laughs> no. just like, I just sat there I, mean, I don't know I got messaged by like I said like Illinois Wake Forest I didn't even like go and look like what they're ranked or like how the facilities look you said like, oh that's cool or anything like that I said oh that's pretty cool I guess yeah. and yeah I just didn't, didn't end up I don't I don't know why I mean I don't regret it at all I loved USF I'm happy I went there but it's actually pretty interesting of why I didn't like look into it more uh, um yeah, and it was like completely clueless on college tennis and so why do you choose college tennis as a route did you want to play pro at any point in your life or you just some kind of yeah. playing for fun Mo mostly like my whole route was like kind of like basically playing pro yeah um all through yeah all throughout so we moved to Florida when I was like we moved from Pittsburgh to Florida when I was like nine or ten years old, literally like for tennis. So when you come from Belarus to Belarus, Pittsburgh, from, from Belarus to Georgia, from oh three, okay, and then from Georgia to Pittsburgh, okay, uh, when I was like five, uh -huh. then a few years there, and then we moved no. to Florida because of tennis. But so you guys know there's such thing as a green card lottery, right? Yeah, won the green card lottery. He's the winner. What? He's the winner of the green card lottery. Right Pretty lucky here. guy over there. Yeah. Okay, my parents, <laughs> my parents won the green card lottery. <laughs> So, okay, that's cool. I didn't even know that was in there. In, uh, in Belarus. In Belarus. I, I, Not stuck. It just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to do that, but I don't think they want more Brazilians here. So they, 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 they canceled, they canceled it. The Brazilian yeah. edition. No, just, but yeah, uh, my whole, when my dad started coaching me, he like, how I even started playing, he like randomly bought a tennis racket and gave it to me. And he's like, do you want to play? And I guess we started playing. Yeah. And he coached me like through, through spurts, like through my whole career um he literally started learning from like watching youtube videos we yeah. got on the courts and he'd like he use everything he learned from youtube to try to apply it to me like the forehand hit it like this yeah uh, yeah a technique that uh, is pretty much it yeah like how you have the forehand here like just like super super analytical stuff and yeah so he coached at spurts at what point did he like let go a little bit or give some space because i mean we have people who watch the podcast who are solely interested in helping their children develop and that sort of stuff so if you can talk a little bit about that like you know obviously you not knowing much about tennis your dad not knowing much mm -hmm. about tennis but then at what point did he kind of give give space and that sort of stuff and let you like just trust i guess who you were working with um to be honest like pretty much throughout my whole junior career he was like always there um he kind of started letting go my first year after college okay. um i was kind of always like I was always, like, a bigger guy, but, like, I'd, like, get very nervous in matches, and, like, he would put a lot of pressure on me, so I'd, like, play very defensive, like, scared tennis, um, which 
I could play some pretty good defense, but that wasn't my game. I shouldn't be like attacking and stuff. <laughs> I six to this six out here. We're talking about defense. <laughs> After my first year in, in college, that's when he kind of started letting off. Um, he wouldn't really come to the matches anymore. We just, I'd stop like going out and doing baskets with him. That's when I really like ended up like loosening up a little bit. I'm um, really going after my serve, coming to the net, hitting the ball harder. Uh, my second year in college, just before COVID hit, I still like wasn't playing well. Um, I still had like a losing record at like five, six, but I was starting to play better, starting to like learn my style more, and it paid off like later. Yeah, so what what did change when you decided to make those all conference teams, AAC and then Big Ten? Like, what was the I guess the biggest difference between the beginning of your college career and then at that the end? I mean, just like loosening up, playing my game, going after my shots, transfer into indoors. <laughs> <laughs> that might have. Uh, year three and four was uh, was outdoors. I mean, I still was decent outdoors, but <laughs> cool. um, yeah, first year again in college, like there's a lot of adjustments to be made to like my parents would like do everything, like make my clothes for me, make me food, um, all that stuff. Then getting into college, I had to do all that by myself. Just mature at school as well, uh, meeting new people. There was just like so much going on. I came in like a very good very good recruit and first year definitely wasn't up to the standards i was like eight and 13 at six mm-hmm. um definitely wasn't up to standard and then second year i decided okay let's let's start changing my game a little bit and then you transferred from usf after your season, senior year mm-hmm. why um it was a mix of two things um a, a few guys started leaving um, he left me Happy <laughs> <bird winners. laughs> a few guys started leaving and i was like oh they're making a change this could be interesting mm-hmm. If they're leaving, like, why? Talk to a few guys. They kind of just wanted to, like, change it up. And me as well. Like, I, I loved USF, but, like, the last year it was, like, it was great, but I was, like, one more year here. I don't know, like, what I can achieve. Like, what would the, po- like, what would the point be? What masters would I do? Like, it would kind of be the same thing. So I was, like, let me go somewhere else and, like, change it up. Um, get a, get an interesting degree somewhere else. I ended up going to a good academic school, in Northwestern. And then, yeah, again, like, meeting new people, making new connections feel like I had already like kind of like maxed out at USF mm-hmm. if that makes sense 50 would have been like just kind of like me plateauing I feel yeah and uh, you also transferred from South Carolina what happened what was the reason for that yeah I mean I, I I made it very explicit that I have a lot of love for the coach there the culture over there in, in South Carolina you just you had to do a lot of the process right like my, you know, my college me going to college was, was kind of nuts. Like, no one ever saw a story like that before. Like, you don't have anyone to compare or see how it was dealt with. Um, and so I I got there. I Like, I gave my best, but I got there in February 12th, and I had to follow post-COVID protocols. And I wasn't playing for, for a month, right, because I had to COVID, and then I had to quarantine in Chile. Couldn't leave the hotel. So I got there naturally out of shape, so I had to come back. So I was good to go mid-March, but again, the team was winning a lot. Like, in that team, we had guys that are number one in doubles in the United States, number one in singles, top 10. So, like, the team went from 25 and finished the season eight. So, everyone was winning, right? I didn't get as many opportunities. And during COVID, I spent from February of 2020. For for me, like, 2020, February 2021, I only played one tournament. That was the French Open. So, I only had one amazing result, but only that. I, like, and then... It was a decision me and Josh, like, he always, he always valued a lot of my career and my development. And, I, I mean, I was so straightforward. My dream became, dude, like, you're practicing two, three shifts a day, but if you practice every day and you don't play, you improve like this, right? Mm-hmm. And if you practice 70% and you're playing, you improve like this. So you need to be playing. Let me, let me, let me play that. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> Team is top eight, bro. What do you want him to do? I feel you. I, I mean, you don't you don't change your winning recipe. I gotta start. I mean, and I was. I mean, I, I give him that. I was I was out of shape. Like everything is new, man. Like Brazil, it's completely different mm-hmm. from here. Like everything, everything. Like the food, the culture, like the language. Language barrier is big. So like, I mean, even tennis itself. Probably play a lot of outdoor clay in Brazil, and you come to South Carolina where it's cold. And mm-hmm. I play two like. Hardcore times in my life before. I know That's I crazy. Yeah. Like my loop before, yeah. like bro, bro, my first month, I probably didn't get a single ball in the strings. Like <laughs> so, I mean, and, and then he came to me, and he was just about like market value in some way, like because I didn't play my, my first season, I didn't play for a year before. I only had one good result. If I decided to transfer right after, like in that summer, he was like, like I still have a lot of value. Right? Like, I'm still, I'm still seen like as a good acquisition. But let's say, like, the team, like, after the success of the team, he brought a lot of good players. 
James Story, who played one, I think, from Memphis. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys that, again, they they kept making history. They did the following they made to two. And you would be tough for me to play in a team like that. It's very competitive, right? And and so if I you don't play for two, three years, and then that's it. Like a guy that had a good junior's career, but that was two, three years ago. We don't know how he plays. So it's a very tough spot that that I, I'm actually very, very happy. I mean, uh, jo Josh kind of was honest with me and and that's true. Like the only way I could improve was playing. So USF was so was a great field. So you felt like the training and preparation was good. You just did not matches. Exactly, exactly. And and it's tough when you're like coming out of the bench. Like for example, one day a guy screwed up doing the doubles, and I asked before Josh like, and he said, "Yeah, Brennan, like you know, you're not, you're not playing today. Like the guy's winning a lot, and you're not playing." And I said, "Okay." So we're at Mississippi State. And we had this crazy like rock star bus. Like I do the warm up, come back, change clothes because he was very cool. Like I don't even have underwear on me. Like I had it on the bus. And then he comes like as soon as double points finish, steps on my shoulder and say, "You're in." Like and and then like be me no underwear on. Let's stand up. Well, I was chilling. Bro. Said it was like, cold, bro. What you mean you got no underwear? On? <laughs> man, like, layers, man, layers, man, layers, layers, layers. Three underwear, <laughs> <laughs> two shorts, sweats. Um, and they like. You come in like I had no idea about college, and then I play a guy that was already like Gregor Ramskogler. Like he played college for six years. He was a senior, screaming on my face. Like I had no idea what was happening, dude. Like no ideas. So. It's a shock for sure. Did you put underwear on, Bruno? Yes, I do. <laughs> the five minutes between seniors and doubles, I spent four minutes looking for underwear. So he was also not uh, like I got it, and there were no warm up stuff. It's crazy as well. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, you have to be ready to go right away. Yeah. Okay, I'll tell my, my recruiter story, and I guess you guys can talk to us about why you believe that your company would be able to fix what happened to me. So, like, I wasn't the best junior. I played um, a bunch of ITFs in the summer. I didn't play that many matches. I was losing early. I got to maybe, like, 800 off of a few doubles results. And then I was at Saddlebrook for a few months. That's a, for you, those you don't know, it's a tennis academy in Wesley Chapel near Tampa. So... I'm at Saddlebrook for a few months, and they helped me with my recruiting process. They helped me make a tennis video. They helped me um, compose an email to write to coaches, teach me what to say, and that sort of stuff. I knew nothing about college tennis, so I reached out to a bunch of schools, like f between 50 and 100 schools I emailed. I got a few responses back. So then I got an offer from maybe three or four schools, Division One schools, like the l lower Division One. My school, the one that I ended up choosing... From my, from my understanding is I had the same offer as the other schools, like roughly the same offer, same scholarship. So I said, okay. I thought it was the best option. I didn't have time to go because I had to. It was like in the fall, and I had to start in the spring, otherwise I lose eligibility. So I sign for my school and I go. Um, I play a season. I play five. I don't do that good. I do okay, but I don't think I'm good enough to transfer. Like you said about value, I don't think I have any value to go to any school that's better. So if I leave and I transfer, I'm going to have to walk on at another school. So I decided, okay, I'm going to stay, try and play. And I asked my coach if I can get more scholarship. He says yes. So I'm thinking that I have a little bit more scholarship for the next season. And when the like the bill comes, I actually have less scholarship because what I was promised was spread out for a full year and I got it in one semester. Mm -hmm. So let's say, I don't want to call a number, but let's say, let's say it's $6, right? I said, okay, I'm going to get $6 a semester. That takes a good chunk of the scholarship, but the $6 was supposed to be spread up for the whole year. Mm -hmm. So the next semester, I got $8. $8 so I'm thinking, okay, now I got $8, but what I actually have is $4 because it's 4 and 4 You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I ended up having to pay more money for my second semester there, and I paid that for a year before I actually got decent results and I can apply for other scholarships, like academic scholarships and that sort of stuff. And then by the end of it, it was okay, but the first two years, I was paying a decent amount of money and I was not, that's not my understanding of what was supposed to happen. So I guess now tying it back to your guys' company, how could you guys help? I guess you can explain, um, it's your first time, I guess, being public with, with your company. So why don't you tell, tell the, um, the audience what your company is about, what recruits it is about, and why my problem would not have happened if, if you guys existed. All right, so let me start from the beginning. Like I said, I was like a pretty good, pretty good recruit. And I, no coach has really reached out to me. Like, again, even before that eight-year result, when I did sign for USF, I already had ATP points. So, like, 
you would think like at least some coaches would reach out, but they, they really didn't. So I think like the core issue for at least for first of all for coaches is the fact that like for, to recruit, they like either go to a tournament or they go to the office, go to the computer and go to the UTR website and start like looking at players like, hey, this player, this player, and then try finding them on Instagram and then like try finding their phone numbers and then messaging them. And even when they do message them, they don't even know if like that player wants to play college tennis. Mm -hmm. And then if they do start talking to them, they don't really know much details about them, what their GPA is, what their budget is, what they can pay. And like when you talk with a coach, you kind of beat around the bush for the first three, four weeks. It's inefficient. Like, yeah. Oh, about like scholarship and stuff. You really don't want to get to that point. Um, and yeah, for for our platform as a player, you would come on, you would connect your UTR, your WTN numbers to your account. You would have a bio, all of your results. You can upload your match videos. Um, also, you can upload your transcripts, which will have your GPA, SAT scores, all of that. And we're also like we're we have an AI AI already for international players. Where say you're French. You go on, upload your transcript, and it like automatically translate to translate that. Sorry, so translate is that to GPA, and then the last thing is the budget. A player just lists his budget range, what he's able to pay, um, from like zero to five thousand dollars, all the way to up, up to like ninety five to one hundred thousand, and all those details are on your profile. And as a coach, again, if you want to play college tennis, you sign up for our pl platform. It's free. You put in all those details in your account, and as a coach, he would then log on. And then search, for example, I need a player for 2025 with above a $30,000 budget, above a 9.2 ETR, and above a 3.0 GPA. And those players would, would pop up, and he would be able to message them straight through a platform. And yeah, start having conversations. Um, obviously, it's more personal than just stats, but that's the point, like to narrow it down to the coaches and then start like having conversations with, with that player. And again, with your situation with the budget and stuff, you can list that like on the profile. And then the coach again can can see that straight away. So pretty much, it's like the coach gets to say what they are looking for. The player gets to say yeah, what they're same looking for. same for the player. He has the search profile filters of Team UTR. He can. Um, we're gonna have a feature again where it'll, it'll have an algorithm where it'll, where it'll show you the schools that are closest to you based on the UTR, the academics, everything, and it'll okay. recommend schools for you. And then you can search for yourself on the search filters. Like I need a school with this tuition, this Team UTR. Um, we'll even have details like do they provide stringing rackets what clothes like we'll, we're trying to make it as as detailed as possible yeah and for your case uh per se like we're doing a lot of stuff right we have that AI, the ai stuff that that puts your transcripts like university is very expensive to translate it put it to gpa we have no idea what gpa is to be honest and and for your for your case Oh, and all of that is free, by the way. Yeah. Like, they're making it free. Again, the core is free. Everything is free. The core, you can make your profile, talk to coaches. If you need extra help, there's, like, add-on packages and stuff, consultations, some some extra boosts and stuff. But the core of the platform is, is free. Completely. Yeah, and for your case, so what are, we, what are we trying to make with Recruiter, right? What's our mission, right? We know that people that have good um, uh, junior careers, they, they get messages and, and, like, they get a ton of messages on, on Instagram, like, and they just kind of reply very informal, but we're worried about the general public, right? Kids that like mm. we're, we're not top fifty, we're not top one hundred, that that actually want to achieve their potential, right? A lot of people they go to to agents and they spend for four or five k, and an agent just calls like eight of his friends, nine of his friends, and say, "Look, look, I have this player. You want him or not?" So what we try <laughs> pretty much like, what we what we trying to do is like make it democratic, and just makes in a way that like. Imagine you, if you was in your case, you have in your platform, you put what you want to pay, where you want to go, um, what you can see the UTRs from the team, and then you can have exposure to 200, 300, 400 schools. Like, we want to make sure you go to a place you want, paying the, the price that's fair, and we want to give you that opportunity. We want to make it democratic. So we, that's why we decided the platform should be free. I think everyone should have the opportunity to to go and see all the doors they can right and if they need a special help or, or something like this they can always get some of the premiums but it's for you having your best college experience like they get brazilian players dude to go like to north missouri like guys that cannot speak english like guys that like never been to less than 15 celsius on their lives and they go there and they overpay many of most of the times they're overpaying they don't like the school they don't like the coach they like a lot of stuff, and they have a horrible um, experience. Mm -hmm. And they come to Brazil and say, look, this is horrible. Don't do it, right? And and we're trying to be like as an ambassador to say, look, college tennis is great. 
I think that's the way if you wanna if you wanna improve academically, if you wanna be a pro, you can have you can discover yourself over there. And look, man, these are the opportunities you can get. This is your potential. Just go get it. Right? And again, like many people don't know like details about college tennis and stuff. Like we we're gonna have a resources page that's like pretty in depth, how to get eligible visas, um, how to adjust to college life, like all of that stuff. Road to pro, for example. Like we joke about it. Like we've been in college for four or five years and we still don't know like how many pro tournaments we can play, how much prize money we can take. You really, really, really don't know. So we're going to have like a pretty comprehensive resources page. And this will only be for college tennis or will it eventually? Uh, we want to we wanna get this the tennis model down pretty perfect. Mm -hmm. And then we do, we do want to go to all sports mm -hmm. um, for sure. But we're trying to, again, we have all the connections in tennis. Some of the other hard work we've done is just like calling hundreds of coaches, getting feedback getting them pre-signed on our platform. We already have like over a hundred um, on the platform. That's where, again, where we're using our tennis connections, mm -hmm. um, perfecting the platform, and then probably moving to the other sports. So the coaches like the idea. The they coaches that you spoke into. Some of the feedback we've gotten, again, like sometimes like agents are very dishonest with coaches. They'll send them an email. Hey, I have a 11.5 UTR player. And, and um, they'll look in the player, like, it's your point one. And then the, the coach will be like, He's a, he's a 10 so how would that be different in in um like on the website? Um, well, the player can can connect his UTR and WTM numbers automatically. So I have to log in through the actual site. So it's like a confirmed UTR and a confirmed WT. He's all verified. All oh, verified with the translation. Well. Yeah. And if it's automatically change the WTN, change it updates. The WTN, okay, updates there. So it's it's all linked, right? Okay. And the thing is, like, you I, I, like people that they're probably listening is and watching is. College recruitment is me like a coach sends like let's put make easy numbers like he sent a hundred DMs to a hundred players, thirty reply, um, he starts talking to ten, and then one of them don't don't get doesn't get the the SAT score the other one doesn't speak English the other one is just using his leverage to go to other school right and he ends up signing two, so he spends eight months of his life energy like investing he he dropped all the recruits to have this guy. And then all of a sudden he lost it, and it's a waste of energy. Like, and, and if you think in a way of of how they recruit girls, man, it's like guy like coaches, men coaches texting 15, 16 year old girls on DMs, man. Like, really this is not right. Like, college is there's a lot of money involved. It's too big, and it's getting too professional, especially with the NIL deals to be like that. And um, how early does it start the recruiting process? Like, our kids get in. I guess the DMs from, from coaches that since they were 13, 14, 15, how, how early can they start? And does your, I guess, your platform guard against the, the rules of the NCAA? Yeah, well, I think junior, junior year in high school, um, 16, <laughs> 16 years, like junior year in high school, 16 years old is mm -hmm. when coaches are starting to be able to recruit players. Okay. We're definitely going to have something on the platform with like asks questions, whether you're actually going to be recruiting yeah. or, or, and stuff because... Yeah, we definitely want to abide by all the NCAA rules and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's that's definitely going to be something that's in place. Yeah. Um, same with transfers. Um, there's actually a lot of transfer players who want to transfer who have signed up to our pre-platform right now. So uh, you can't help with the transfer process, the transfer portal, and all that. We can right now, now. It's like when I was transferring, all the coaches could see me in the portal, but I couldn't really again see all the coaches. And all so that was transparent as so both sides. Yeah. No, it'll be transparent again. We have we'll have a process where. We'll make sure someone is in the transfer portal before like being visible on our on our platform. So to simplify it, so you have a junior, 13, 14, 15, at whatever age they decide they want to go to school, they sign up for recruited, and there they can upload like connect their grades, so their GPA, transcripts, their UTR, their world tennis number, um, I guess a tennis recruiting video because lots of yeah. people like to see this, and pretty much it just allows them to. Put everything forward so you, you eliminate a lot of the back and forth and a lot of searching. And then they get to see the same thing from the coaches as me and they can see how big a team is, like exactly correct. how much pollution. Videos they of the videos of the team training, pictures of the facility. Um, again, so the coaches will have their own profile. The schools, he has the coaches control like the school's profile. Yeah. Okay. There'll be a little bio about the coach, but mostly he's just having to do everything. Yeah. So everybody wins. It's more efficient, you spend less money, and you get to see all the options available on both sides. Yeah. Something else that's cool as well is like the social media part of it. As a coach, you'll be able to make like a post as well, just like on Instagram or Facebook, you make a post, and then everyone else that's on the site, coaches and players, will be able to see that post. So maybe even as a coach, you can write, hey, I'll be at Eddie Her in two weeks. I'm watching matches. If you want to come meet me here at this time and talk a little bit. We can do that, and then he makes that post, and the other players see it as well, and they'll be like, "Oh, I'm playing that tournament. Let me let me meet this coach there." 
And then what's about like leaving school? So, you know, I don't know if you guys thought of this, but recently you see like the the scholarships that some players have been getting, that sort of stuff. And obviously, NIL. NIL not, not NIL, but like the, what is this? Like the herd, is it herd grad? Like oh, after they finish, like, after they finish school. So like, what's about after school? Like, do you, have, have you guys had any discussions about if, like, let's say I'm graduating school and I'm top five in the country and I believe that I'm marketable to, to play pros. Like, is there a way to make a profile so the agencies and, and people and sponsors outside of school see that? Is that something you guys talked about or not really? You're making them more money right now. <laughs> As we speak. <laughs> you have another recruiter insurance? I mean, um... Uh, gonna get them money. You're gonna get them. We'll edit this part out because... We need 20% of the company. <laughs> I mean, it's it's, You're def welcome. <laughs> it's definitely something we have in our mind. We're, we're, we we want to. Now it isn't your mind. <laughs> it wasn't five minutes ago. Um, we want we want to actually make something. We want to disrupt. We want to go big, right? We want to make a big change. We want to make this right. Um, we're we're having amazing conversations uh, about uh, with USDA, ITA. That's something we we can we can say over here. They love our idea. They love. They really have trouble with agents, and and they love the idea of having something unified. And, and organized and free and democratic, right? Um, um, like like we offer and we have we have the dream and the goals to to make it a full ecosystem, right? To help players um, mentoring before they can talk because the eligibility rules you can only talk uh, you can't talk to freshmen in high school, right? So our platform is going to limit. You can only message coaches after if you if you're older than a freshman, right? But yeah, they can start before. We're going to start mentoring the kids and and we want to. Um, not only take the kid to college, also help them settle there uh, with a lot of information, everything he can prepare for. He can go there. We want to take care of him in the future of opportunities, job opportunities, everything. Um, he needs to be successful in college and to have, again, we're unleashing opportunities, we're unleashing potential, right? So if you can help him get a job, a coach, or know more people, it's effective. And then after after college, we also again that's the idea of the ecosystem, having guys having having brands just just looking for players right there. We want to have like the tennis community united, posting. And if you want to know or get anything from tennis, you go there, and then boom, you can you can go to college, you can talk to people, you can meet new people, you can find jobs, you can do anything, and then and then boom, you're set. One one stop shop. The next step we've been discussing is um. We've already been talking to like some country clubs to partner to where um, there's like a job section on the website for the athletes. Whereas a country club, you would promote like whatever job you have for the summer and stuff. And then as a athlete in college already, you can apply to those jobs. And then, yeah, just speak with a country club straight through Slide. the platform to, to get a summer job. Like I, I would have used something like that in the summer. Like I did private lessons, but it would have been nice if. I had something where I, I could coach in like a country club for, for sure yeah. and uh, there was a place where I could like look hey these places in Florida these places here like this pays this much this pays this much I mean and, and one thing like I think we all know here um, how how tennis can give you a lot right like mm -hmm. it can give you like you can, like the small things and intangible things like friendships but you can also be your living and you, you can give you new opportunities can make it becomes your identity at some point Right and and our goal is if if we can make you figure yourself out and, and have the most opportunities you can, and, and literally like with the least amount of energy, our mission is fulfilled. Right and, and imagine, like I keep imagining if I had that stuff during my recruiting process, man. Like I had no idea what college. Bro, you would still go to the same school. I mean, so <laughs> you obsessed with the coach. <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> You didn't need no help. Yeah, bro, but I only, Take I was, me, please. <laughs> but I, but I had like I, I, I only like I had no idea if they're actually good. Like I just trusted him a lot yeah. because I didn't talk to other people. I mean, yes, I liked him very much, and he gave me a lot of confidence on, on what he could do. But like, dude, like you didn't even know a ranking they were, what a division I mean, conference was, right? I didn't know what SEC was. Like they kept talking about you going to the SEC, and the SEC, bro. Oh, what is SEC? Letters, just alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's just noise, man. It's did not. You, it's all play tennis. Did you know about the players on the team um, a lot? Or? No, I I knew Danny because he was gonna go after he became number one in college. But just because he came to Brazil to play at G five when I was fourteen and we played doubles together. Mm -hmm. So like, and that that's one of the reasons. Though. I knew a guy there. I didn't know guys anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So I mean, 
but I definitely didn't know the level I was getting myself into. Yeah. And you could have saved me like a transfer. We could just have gone for the best feed right away. True. Yeah. Justin, do you have any more um, questions for my recruited partners and I? <laughs> part of the company? How much percent we take it? <laughs> no, but um, yeah, man, it sounds like a very valuable um, venture. And we wish you guys the best. I mean, I for sure, if I had something like this when I was in juniors, I believe that I would would sign up for it because I was doing everything on my own. Like, yeah. I was, yeah. I was searching like I had exposure to. Yeah, because if you even if you think about the advisors, like the reality is, is you're not the only kid they're advising. You know, so they they want you uh, to be an agent. Agent. Yeah, like yeah. Cause, well, for me, it wasn't an agent. For me, it was like an advisor because I was not. Right. I was at the high school, so they had an advisor who helped them oh, do that okay. stuff. And I mean, I didn't go to that school, but I was at the academy, so she helped me. You know, she's helping thirty people. Correct. So, so you're not the only person that she's helping. So it's not like she, like she helped me with the template, and my coach at the time helped me with the template to write. But also, maybe my coach doesn't know the, you know, about all the schools that I'm writing to, and he can only give his opinion sitting on the couch right next to me. But he's not on visits there. You know what I mean? So, um, I feel like this is the most tra- transparency, so you can see as much like. I got fooled in the sense of like I looked at the website and I was like, oh, like I saw rankings, they were top top thirty. I was like, oh, my school is top thirty, and I didn't realize it was my first my school's first year Division One, so they were top thirty Division Two, and then for four years we couldn't play NCAA's even if we won the conference tournament. I didn't know this; we weren't good enough to do it. But like these these things didn't we didn't know. Like, I had no clue, you know. And then I show up and my college experience is not what I envisioned in my mind. I don't know if my level deserved it or not like maybe i didn't do that good but like like i said it's not what i expected going in and i feel like with you guys you would have the parents and the kids would have a better understanding of of the situation that they're walking into you know what i mean and and i mean it's it's a business like if if you're the best recruit in the nation or or if you want you like you you don't have that quite level yet it's still a business the coach is gonna persuade you to get you in right like he's gonna hide information he's like for example let's say the school uh, has 2,000 people and you want to go to big school. He's not going to tell you the number. He's going to hide all of that because he wants you together. He wants to get you, right? And, and he has his own personal interest. Like, and he's know? dealing with 80 kids. He can, he can only get your interest and he's trying to get it done quick as he can. Yeah, yeah. And Exactly. It yeah. goes back to that. Like he already DM'd 100 guys, study replied. You wanted the few that are like actually going well. He can't drop you because <laughs> he dropped the other kids to get you. So he's going to try to persuade you. He's going to try not lie. I mean, coaches can't lie. Right, but still, like you don't know everything yeah. you're getting. Yourself. Or the thing too it's is getting years. rushed. So like, me, my I was doing okay in juniors for at the beginning, and I got like offers from like Boise State, William and Mary, but they were like trying to get me to like sign Sorry, or like sign showing me they were so interested to come on a visit, like do this quick, and I started winning some grade fours, and then I started I beat a few like top hundred players, and like then I started getting messages from from good Division One schools. So, like, if I didn't have, let's say, either good parents or maybe the agent that I chose or whatever, they weren't guiding me, I could have got myself into a deal early and I could have been asked out on a, you know what I mean? So I think the education part is very important too in this in this whole process because you don't want to let get kids making choices without the information in front of them. I think that's the one of the biggest things for me. So I think uh, yeah, it's a good, it's a great thing that you guys are doing. And I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna do good things. Thank you. I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna. Bro, I think it's gonna be big. And he's talking about all his offers. He said, "Oh, and then I got offers from good schools. Like he killed Boise State. I didn't mean it. I killed a very dude. I meant like highly ranked <laughs> Division One schools. Like no, no disrespect to anybody's team. Like, come on. But yeah, yeah. Cut that out. I didn't even think of that too. Like, no, I bro, I was speaking in my head, but I didn't want to interrupt. I didn't. Know. Right, it, <laughs> the, schools that didn't align with what I was trying to do yeah. with my college career. That's a better way to put it. So it's poetic. Yeah, yeah, we own this. We can edit all this. Shit. <laughs> it's all done. Start it over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, guys, thank you. And we got anything else? Uh, you got the the game? Yeah. So, so to end up, we have not really a game. It's just more like. Oh, I have one question actually. Before okay. the game. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Um, this was a question from YouTube, and to the person who asked, sorry, it's been a few weeks because this episode is recorded during the week of Miami. It's not gonna drop till a few weeks from now. We think. Um, and he asked a question like a week or two ago. So we've been sitting on this for like a month. But it's like, if you're between an 8 and 10 UTR, what do you think is the biggest separator to the next level to get to an 11 to 12 UTR? 
Um, does anyone want to court you? Yeah, let me think about it. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, uh, so the question was how he gets to that level. What's From the difference a, between? Yeah, like if someone's around an 8 to 10, how, how could they get to an 11 to 12? I think it's going to sound like really like a bunch of what you hear on, on the internet, but I, I saw, I see in college and I see a little bit when I get the opportunities to be near guys that are doing green sports. It's just like two plus two is always going to be four, right? If you keep doing whatever your friend that's at ADUTR is doing, right? Training the same amount of, of time as him, like you got to grow the same as him, right? And you're going to kind of stay stuck. So you have to just put yourself in a position to do a little bit more, like, independent of what your goal is if your goal is like uh playing d1 if your goal is like going through straight away i think i think the main thing is and, and you can got guys that you guys are on pro you guys know that like everyone get works hard but i think it's like um doing a little bit more you know getting a little bit of like a little edge every day and then all of a sudden like if you get a little edge for six months it might not show up in the beginning but let's say, for example, you're in college and, you, and you're doing a little bit better, like every day, um, freshman, sophomore year, all of a sudden you have a crazy junior year, a crazy um, senior year, and everyone just thinks like you was out of nowhere. But you, you're actually it the is only the years, yeah. the years you've been doing it. Yeah. It's going to sound really coachy, but I mean, that's, I think, the reality. Yeah, I've hit with like eight UTRs and 11 UTRs, like before knowing what their UTR is, and like I can't really tell like who's what UTR like everyone can play everyone can hit pretty well it's obviously different when you're in a match but I just think like analyzing what you do mm -hmm. um and going into practice with a purpose like if you played a match and yeah my forehand's going along like 10 times in a match and like I lo lost like these big points because of that going so something different this <laughs> like <laughs> going and chain next practice and saying like let's work on that not just I, mean, I don't know I see a lot of people just going to practice just hitting balls not really thinking you have to like work hard but also like think think smart too mm -hmm, like, yeah. what am i doing like you see you see a lot of players like improving so much and there's a there's a reason for it yeah i would say like to tie in your two ideas like it's about being efficient with the time you're spending on the court because mm -hmm. you spend the time efficiently if you spend the same amount of time as someone else who's not you're going to get more out of it then you do that for as much as you as you can um within reason because you don't want a kid to get burnt out mm -hmm. and then the last thing is like yeah or hurt exactly and the last thing I would say is, like, I've played, like, you know, Battle of Boca? Yeah. Yeah. Who does Battle Boca? Boca? Yeah, I've played Battle of Boca. That's and I've right. played, like, <laughs> I've played, like, eights, nines, tens. Like, I've played pretty much all levels there. And, like, these tens and stuff, they can play, too. Like, they can hit the ball and they have you stressed for a few games here and there. Like, they want to win, you know? But you can tell that sometimes they have to overplay or they feel like they have to overplay. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's probably the same thing for me. If I'm... But what's I'm around a 12 now, let's say. And if I want to play a 13 or 14, maybe it's the same thing. Maybe if I trust myself a little bit more and I don't overplay, um, don't come out of, like, my like base level, I guess, um, then maybe the result is different. So, like, I guess reassuring at the level that sometimes you don't have to be better in a match. You don't have to do more than you're capable of because if a 10 – plays at a certain level for the whole match i'm gonna be stressed out for like yeah. an hour and a half it takes to play the match i'm a 12 you know what i mean so it's about like being efficient with the time for as long as you can and then trusting what you did in that time is efficient that it's going to work in a match you know and i think like he was a a lot of times people can hit the ball um but don't underestimate the competitive nature of the game so like if you're never showing that you're upset and you're always being positive and the guy feels that you're always there. I'm sure, and, and if you're playing against guys who are nines and tens, they probably aren't as seasoned as players who are 13s, 14s, 15s. So if you can show that you're going to be there every point, maybe they start making some mistakes, maybe they get a little bit tight, and then maybe that, maybe you start feeling like a nine, they start, they start playing down, playing like a nine, and it's a close match. So that don't underestimate. Huh? That is absolutely Yeah, yeah. and especially if you're playing these battle of vocals and stuff. <laughs> It is like early round. Yo, it's, it's no, it's no ads. It's ten points every for the third set. Yo, on, like it equalizes. If I'm on serve late in the first with a ten, it's like dog. Like what's going on? I, uh, tight. Like I'm like I, exactly. I got to be all it together. I, 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 so, that's a good point. I don't know. If, <laughs> I don't know if this mentality. To accelerate. I don't know if this mentality is for for everyone. But when us when I played a player like a UTR higher than me or a UTR and I have two UTRs higher, like I'd always come into the match and be like 
I don't want to lose 0-0. Just mm-hmm. let me get this first game, like, feel better about myself. Okay, I held again. It's 2 all Now he's more nervous. Mm-hmm. Like, definitely, like, just, like, okay. Stay, yeah. keeping it close, keeping yeah. it in the match. And then again, sure. like, I played players much lower uh, level level than me, too. And if it gets a 4 all 5 all there's a real reason. Like, <laughs> it gets <laughs> it he's, the, he's the GOAT of, like, years of 13 5 or whatever. He's the GOAT of going to super tie breaks with, like, 10s and 9s, bro. You get this guy's records. He he, he beats, like, 13s, 2 and 2 <laughs> in a routine. And then you go back and scroll a little bit down. <laughs> and he has a 6 7 a six seven six four eleven nine in the break in the that's probably why he's not a 15 you know that's that's the reason right there <laughs> yeah. again so like everyone can kind of play it's all about the, the mentality for sure the mentality helps you know, a lot. What, what makes like players dangerous too is like consistency like if you know that this player not consistently consistency of like making balls in the court but like consistency of level like if you know that this person is going to be this level all the time you know you can't come and have a bad day against someone so like if you if i'm playing a 10 and he puts a million balls in the court or something per se, I know, like, if I miss, like, I'm in trouble. You know what I mean? Like, maybe I don't lose the match because maybe my quality is still too good for them at the 12, but, like... It'll be a like, match. It'll be a match, you know, and I'm going to be sweating a little or bit. Or maybe he ri- realizes you're uncomfortable against, like, serving more yeah. and it starts doing... That. Gets confidence. Yeah. Then when I'm when I'm handing back the balls at the end of the match, I'm like this. Like, Shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, that's all we got. Hopefully that helps. Uh, uh, really YouTube. So, this, I'm going to give you... Three different things in a category. I'm going to rank them. And we discuss the rankings as we go. Mm-hmm. Coke, Fanta, Sprite. Let the guests go first. Coke. But we have to. You got to rank them. Oh, uh, uh, Coke first. Uh, Focus first, for sure. Forge uh, real. Hands down. Focus. Which which Fanta flavor? Bro, you the, pick. The orange Fanta Sprite. I'll go. There's a lot of good. Good. You got to take that. I'll go Coke, Fanta, Sprite. I think I'm with you. Yeah. Okay. Coke find the spread. Orange Fanta. Well, I'll I'll put Coke last. What? I'm telling you, bro. I'll take, I'll take When you go to the movies, you're getting out of Coke and popcorn. Yeah. That's yeah. Also, I'm not saying it's bad. You ever had Coke in Mexico? You ever had a Mexican Coke in the glass bottle? Glass yeah, bottle. yeah, no, yeah. Re- refresh it. So what is it in Brazil? It is fire. I'm not saying it's bad. <laughs> I was just saying, like, a cold spray, like, has its value as well. I don't know. It's consistency. We just talked about consistency. Nobody's yeah, more consistent than a cold. It's different in different countries. To me, the, consistent, the consistency of Sprite is at number two. Oh, yeah. Consistency to second place. <laughs> you know? Wait, what's your... You got Fanta last? I got Fanta last. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. They got the I'm purple Fanta, crazy. the yeah, great Coke Fanta. Coke first, though. Coke has to Coke first. first. It's just only mathematics. And a Fanta Coke Sprite, Sprite is You don't know about mathematics. I do. <laughs> 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 Coke is one. Sprite two. Fanta three, for sure. Uh, Lock it in. Okay. We got... Matches. Match time. A.M., P.M., night. Like, mid-morning, mid-afternoon... 7 p.m., 8 p.m. start. Mid-morning is elite. Mid-morning. Mid-morning is elite. Mid-morning. 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 Like you're playing uh, 10, 10. 10. Yeah. You said 10, early morning. 10, 11. Mid-morning, mid, mid morning, like 3 p.m. and 7, 8 p.m. I think mid-morning is by far the worst. You're crazy. Bro, what? When you're done, it's lunchtime. You eat it's and you no, sleep. Like, and you know, <laughs> and when you wing the <laughs> feeling like you just drink the whole day, like, <laughs> the whole day. Like, like, silly like, like, butterflies everywhere. <laughs> like, just <laughs> noon or one p.m. is still like mid mid morning. It's uh, that's starting to get to the, what was the afternoon. But you were trying to change the whole thing. I mean, no. I'm no, telling no. you, 10 a.m., 3 p.m., <laughs> 8 p.m. Just wake up, 10 a.m. <laughs> just pick, bro. <laughs> But this question is flawed because I don't know. Like, let's say the third option is 8 p.m. or 7 p.m., right? 8 p.m. is pretty late. But like, you don't know that you start at, at 8 p.m. You're thinking I played fourth on, not before. No, but I'm just telling you. The match is not I, it's tough because you gave me three options, but, like, I really don't like the 11 a.m. to the 4 p.m. slot. That's Any, <laughs> anything, like, super early or super late. I like. But that is the point of this whole thing. You know <laughs> you're playing. No, and you're wrong because if you play a college match, it's... Starting at okay. nine, okay. it's starting at three, okay. Okay. or starting at seven. Okay. Okay. I don't know if you know this, but I'm 28 years old. I haven't been to college in many years. So what I'm saying, it shows in the mathematics. What I'm saying, yo, is the worst. Three is the worst. Eight, eight p.m. is the worst. Wait, p.m. is the worst. seven. Eight p.m. is the worst. Bro, I go nine matching. Bro, well, I, 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 bro, I go to bed at like usually like 11, bro, and I'm getting there at 8 p.m. Like my, I'd say 10, and I'm, I'm like this. I'd say the early morning. And you have to do nothing all day. Like you literally have to. S- Zero. That's me, bro. I'm, I'm simple. I'm gonna go. I like AM the most, PM second, 
night match. I like AM the most, but night match was second and the worst. Is like, I, agree. Agree. I agree with him because, I, like, like I said, you feel sluggish in the day? Yeah, it's like you're in that yeah. moment where, like, you could sleep, you could, you, yeah, yeah, you're already awake and you've had the warm up in the morning, but then you wait a little it's bit. Good before. argument. Maybe I would like to sleep the afternoon and then get up and start a new day at night. Yeah. That's the much. Well, like for me, now when I'm playing doubles, most of my matches are after lunch, like between after lunch and in the evening. So you should love it. Yeah, yeah, I've gotten used to it. Like I don't, I don't dislike it. So give, give me your your three. Give me your. I want once again. The <laughs> question is flawed. It's because... not flawed. It is flawed. It is flawed. It is. If you're, you're playing, playing, you're college, playing a final, for example. You're, you're college, college, it's, playing a final. Okay, thank you. That's oh, the most playing, better question. Yeah. How? Yo, you gotta piss me off. No, no, no listen, brother. No. I give you a time for a match. You okay. said you like it or you don't like do it. You rank them. Do I know that the time it, starts? Yes, that's the question. <laughs> that's the question. Okay. Then I go. Then I go morning first, night second. Thank you, dog. Like, it's so yeah. simple, bro. I, I like the heat. Jesus. Like the, heat. the afternoon used to be second, bro. bro. The heat, just people cramping. Anyway, last can one. I, can I make my my point real quick, for, brother, for the audience? You adding stuff to it's not it's not relevant. I want to I, I listen. I wanna it's listen. irrelevant. Okay, let me talk to my business partners. <laughs> in tennis, right? And this is a thing. The only time that you know in a tennis match is like that. It's not always first on second on third on. You play college, you play at four. That's it. Okay, Justin, go ahead. Next question. Am I right or am I right? I can't even talk. Go Thank ahead. you. Go ahead. All right, last one. Cheat day meal. Burger, wings, Don't look at me. pizza. Don't look at me. I couldn't do this. Really. It's an. Bro. Ivan's diet in college was insane. Yeah, dude, he survived on Pizza Hut <laughs> and wings from Pizza Hut every like twice a week, and then they had like a place called Bruno's. They had a massive, like I don't know, like strong bowling. That was the fattest thing I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. And then he would destroy one by that was his diet. My diet in college was something else. Wait, like, he was the but it changed. It changed now. It changed now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. healthy working out. Yeah, he retired. Healthy working out. You were working on a college. But, well. <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> in, in college. Hitting gym like to be like look good. Um in call in college is like okay, gym's like he's, he's doing a good job or no? Okay. <laughs> 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 oh yeah. <laughs> no, not, not a lot of excitement right there. <laughs> yeah, in college is like footwork. I mean I guess footwork and stuff like performance. Mm -hmm. um, more performance related, but now it's like okay, better diet oh, more. The guy waited to retire from tennis to start <laughs> trying <laughs> A flattering lifestyle, like I waited. Yeah, I waited to stop tennis and then like really get healthy. But what? tell me, tell me, tell me, burger, wings, pizza, ranked up. Pizza, burger, wings. What? Is, pizza's last, bro. For me, as good as a burger is, it goes last. I think what? it's a second and wings first. Well, this is a tough one. I don't think, it, and the burger's not really. Cheat, oh, really? It is, dude. It is cheap. It's, Pizza's it's, not. I mean, Five Guys is a is a cheat meal, bro. Bro, it's burger, it's meat and bread. Like, <laughs> <laughs> <It's healthy. laughs> That's exactly why you find that nutrition. Yeah. Like, if you've got the lettuce and onions into you got the veggies. I is mean, pizza the healthiest of the three? For sure. Burger. No, burger. Yeah. Burger might be the most pro. No, wings are the most protein. You eat so many wings. It depends on the like, kind of sauce. Bro, you dip on the sauce. Deep fried. Like, you're eating, yeah, sauce. Like you're eating, dipping it in. This doesn't have to be saucy. You pick, your, you pick your wing. Your wing is saucy. It was a lemon pepper. But even if, even if it's lemon pepper or regular, like dry rub is still fried. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Fried? Could be fried. It's probably fried. Most likely it's fried. Like eating grilled chicken wings. Wait, so you guys, what do you guys prefer? Burger wings. Bro, good burger. burger. Burgers first. Good burger might be one. Wow. Yeah, burgers first. Wings, pizzas last. Pizzas. I might yeah. slide pizza in second. Yeah. You guys been pizza's to California? Like, right. Yeah. Like, what do you guys prefer? Bread the trim. So it's a new question. Uh, Thank you. This is your yeah, podcast. No, because that, that was a your debate. company, your podcast. That was a debate. <laughs> that was a debate. That was a debate on the team. So five guys, Shake Shack or in and out. Five guys, one. I think Shake Shack maybe two, In and Out is three. In and Out, and I will caveat this. In and Out might be the best burger for the price. It's cheap, In and, and it's clean, it's and price. it's good. It's a good price, but the burger isn't. But the burger is just solid. Bro, like it's, it's not so great. Overrated. It's just it's okay. Not it's not great. It's, not great. it's just okay. But for the price, it's probably like six bucks, and it's like okay yeah, for. Five and if I get you pay way too much, but it's the best taste. Five guys is good, but very expensive. Okay. But the In and Out shake, In and Out shake is solid though. In and out shake is all. It's all right, bro. It's just like so straight. In and out fries, it's, it's awful. In and out fries. In, in and out is three. I prefer any of my fingers. In and out is three. It's good. It's good. I prefer any of them is three. It's good, bro. But five guys wins for me. Yeah, five guys. I need you extra fries in the bag. 
one. Make, make my day every time. Yeah. Hey, let us know in the comments if we uh if we're on the right track. Also, um don't forget Pro Stringer, we have a hundred dollars off the machine. They have the new machines out, new clamps out, so get a Pro Stringer. Also we have some merch. Uh, merch selling. We have dry fits, hoodies that Justin's wearing. Um so the link tree in our Instagram bio. Yeah. Uh I think that's everything we covered. Anything else to cover, fellas? Yeah, I, I think that's it, right? Thanks for Keep your time right. quite a lot. Well, you know, it's good. <laughs> All right, thanks for coming on. Hopefully, um, hope you enjoyed the episode and hopefully it comes out good. Everyone, thanks for watching. See you next week. Should we say something about the discount code for the... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, we can just edit this shit right back and yeah. slap it in the middle of <laughs> Cut, cut. <laughs> um, yeah, if you guys want to have any discount codes on the uh, on the recruited website, use the discount code changeover podcast for these guys. Yes, sir, and it'll be down below. We'll have the link down below for whenever we launch, so be ready for it. Perfect. What else? What else? What else? What else? It's your show, bro. It's your show. 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 <laughs> Lovely.